Hello. Well, I thought I'd take a minute to make a little video on kind of why I'm spending so much time building this house and building in a way that's not conventional, that what I keep terming as a high performance home. That term's okay, it, it'll work, but uh, it's kind of funny. When I first designed this house, I had never even really heard of that term. Um, really, what this house, more a more correct description <laughs> would be that this is a passive house inspired house. So if you've ever heard of a passive house, what it is is a, it's a building standard that is second to none really um, in terms of efficiency. And it's very hard to meet the standards laid out in by the passive house guidelines. I mean, we live in a very mild climate. We're zone eight and with global warming it's soon to be zone nine. So, and we're right next to the ocean. I mean, it's amazing how stable this climate is. Um, it really, it goes between like 40 to 60 degrees. It's like the, the majority of the range throughout the whole year. So, um, and even, be, especially because we're right here next to the water, like when we go even just a couple miles inland, it's like at least 10 to 15 degrees warmer on hot sunny days and the ocean really tempers it. But anyways, um, that being said, I thought making a passive house might be a little uh, overboard for our climate. So I basically was gonna do a passive house light. So, and also for budgetary reasons to go passive house light. Um, to go full passive house and really go for it is really gonna hit you in the pocketbook. I think part of the reason why passive house standards were developed was because of the uncertain environmental future that we're facing, um, namely global warming. And it's not uncertain in the fact that is it happening or when it's going to happen, it's just uncertain as to how bad it's going to be now. I sure hope we can figure it out. but. Um, and I'm building this house on the hopes that we're going to figure it out. I really hope this whole house lasts for hundreds of years, and I hope we can figure out our um, our carbon problem. And so, in light of what will hopefully be soon dramatic steps by our society to combat climate change, one of those steps will be to build a lot more efficient housing than what we are doing right now. The passive house standards aim to really kind of rewrite the book on how to build a an efficient home. So because global warming is such a scary thing and such it's coming down the pike and because massive changes are going to be needed in the way we do things, uh, we want to get ahead of the curve if possible. The whole reason we're out here mainly is because we want to reduce our our carbon footprint on this planet. And we're, we're kind of tired of being part of the problem as we see it. And however little impact our little lives have, it still, it still could be reduced and still can help out the planet. If everybody on their own somehow found a way to reduce their carbon, then we wouldn't need the government to do it. But, um, uh, but I definitely think the government will have a lot easier time than all of us, but they don't seem to be doing it, so I guess, so here we are. <laughs> um, but that's a whole nother story, but anyways. So rather than just build a conventional house that on average will probably be sent to a landfill within 50 years, most windows will leak water, you know, after 10 or 15 years, and that will just, on a conventional home, just eat up uh, sheeting and eventually mold and rot will follow. On a new house, you'll probably recite it that first time, you know, in 10 or 15, 20 years. But when it comes around the second time, you know, depending on how the economy's going and how that neighborhood has fared over the decades, it's probably not going to get done again. Or the roof. Or if there's a bad roofing job or a cheap job, you know, it's just it's so easy with with how quickly and how 
in the systems we use to build conventional houses, it's no wonder that they end up in a landfill within 50 years. And basically, if, if my mother and father-in-law are gonna spend their life savings on this house, if it was a conventional house, then within 50 years, their whole life savings is basically gone to the landfill. But if we were to spend a little extra, buy some high-tech materials and use them accordingly, um, and do the work ourselves to save on the money, or save on the labor, then pretty much for the same price as a subbed out, fully subbed out conventional house, we can have a high performance home. With, you know, we just have to wait longer. But by having this high performance home, instead of their life savings only lasting 50 years, this could last 200 years or more. So, so that's why it's worth the extra effort. But it's not only that, it's if this house lasts 200 years, you know, this our family will need a house on this property in for <laughs> hopefully our family doesn't ever sell this land and hopefully we'll make a trust that makes it really hard to do that but uh there's going to need to be housing on this property and if we build a house that could last generations well all those generations will be able to just live into this house and not be building a new house like like is the practice now everybody just just build a new house go to go to the next development the new development and buy a new house and it's just it has to stop at some point because the planet is just not big enough it's the right thing to do for the planet because the energy it'll take to heat and cool this place will be significantly less than a normal house for and its lifetime will be significantly longer than a normal house this house should fit in well in the future where building standards are a lot higher than what they are right now. It's funny because building codes right now take a lot of grief for how much, you know, how little efficiency they're really asking for. The old school is really fighting it hard. Um, you know, like our architect, he he's definitely of the old school. And I took plans that I had drawn to him and basically let him turn them into structural prints, just very basic plans. And just through the couple meetings we had with him, I could tell he just thought that even the mild uh, energy regulations that are, that hurt, that are, that were just recently adopted by our county were just way out beyond the pale to him <laughs> and absolutely made no sense economically or anything. Like he just, um, he could see no way that houses could be improved and he just thinks that it's going to be too expensive and um, that nobody's going to be able to build a house anymore because they're just going to be too expensive, which I can understand that point. But um, I think that's more of a we need to fix a government problem where if, maybe if the government subsidized energy efficient housing rather than cheap conventional housing, then this would be more competitive and anyways lots of tangents in this video i'm gonna try to shorten this down into something palatable but i really just wanted to talk about a little bit of a few of the reasons why i'm spending going to great lengths to build a high performance home or a passive house inspired home because it's so much more work than a normal a conventional home. I mean, I would probably be done by now with a conventional home. And the other part of the high performance homes too is um, the indoor air, indoor air health factor, basically. Um, there's with it super air sealed and with uh, with a high tech HRV unit that's bringing in fresh filtered air constantly. The air inside this house is going to be far far better than a normal conventional home. Any off-gassing that happens in there will just get sucked right out with the ventilation system. The air should be just about as good in, out, inside as outside. 
So that's that's another huge benefit to these houses. And we're also going to have a bunch of solar on top. And I'm probably going to have a pond right over there. And we will, we've got plenty of drop over here that wraps perfectly around the house. We'll put a little hydro system down in there. And so all winter we can have hydropower and all summer we can have solar. And I bet I could get this house to be net zero without much effort. And that would just be awesome.